Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran A.K. The Laird here. And uh, today I have a video for you that I'm sure anyone who follows me on uh, social media and uh, etc. will uh, will be have been expecting because it is a look at a compendium of Atari ST games. My fifth print book um, that I've done with uh, Andrews UK and uh, it follows on from a compendium of ZX Spectrum games, a compendium of Atari 2600 games, a compendium of Atari 8-bit games, and a compendium of Commodore 64 games, which I released over the last year or so. And uh, it follows much as the same format as the last two. And I say that because my first two compendiums uh, didn't have developer interviews in, and a lot of people asked for developer interviews. So in the Atari 8-bit and Commodore 64 books, I put developer interviews in as well, which everybody loved. So they are in this book as well. So it's the same format as those two, and we'll go and look into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. And uh, you may also know that these compendiums are, con sorry, contain the first three A to Z books that I've done. So A to Z of Atari ST games, volumes one, two, and three. But not just that. Um, they also include uh, another 26 bonus reviews because each of the A to Z books had three games for each letter of the alphabet. So obviously that's nine, that's not a nice even number. So I upped it for 10 for the compendium. So there is reviews in here that were not in the A to Z books. Um, you also have three really good developer interviews in here as well, which I'll go into more in due course. And uh, some other little bits and pieces. And uh, I should also add at this point that the reviews in this book are not um, identical to the ones in the A to Z books. Um, some of them have been uh, edited, rewritten, changed. Um, I was fully aware that uh, there was some quite bad mistakes in a few of the A to Z books, which I didn't pick up uh, myself, and they weren't picked up by the person who was proofreading them at the time as well. Um, that person is no longer proofreading, I should say. And um, yeah, so I made an effort to, to, to polish um, a lot of it, the content up um, more for the print book. Um, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, a few people have, have got these actually already. Um, a few um, uh, friends of mine and they were, uh, were, were um, very impressed by it. And I have to say I'm very pleased. I think the cover looks great um, for a start. So well done to the the publishers there because that's all their work i'm not a graphic designer i don't do the uh the covers and layouts so that's their that's their bit um so yes let's have a look so as for previous books it's available in hardback like you see here um sort of a five-ish kind of size and a paperback which you can see in the background and you may notice that the only difference on the cover is that it has this little thing in the corner that says collector's edition all that means is literally hardback is collector's soft the paperback isn't so there's there's no up there's no difference in terms of what's inside um it's all the same content so let's have a little look through it i'm hoping we can see this right on camera the light was absolutely terrible in here today so i have tried to put some lights on with hope, hoping that they won't reflect um uh, around the book so yes so let's let's go for it so obviously it starts off with the usual um intro so there we go we've got the um try to move over a bit so we've got uh introduction and all the usual index of what's what's in the book and then as you can see you have um four reviews uh well two reviews each page sorry um so four reviews and a double page spread um in alphabetical order and uh it pretty much works like that really um there's a mix of um of you know classic games you know for example there commando trace hq um, there's also public domain stuff like um sinister development centipede there um there is a few homebrew games in here as well um not that many because there isn't a massive amount of sd homebrew actually but there is some homebrew stuff in here as well um you might be pleased to hear so there's um an introduction letter on each on each one as well each game has uh whoever the publisher was, what year it was released, and uh, my score out of 10. 
obviously that is subjective. Not everyone's going to agree with my scores. Um, and there might be a few surprises in there of games that I perhaps don't particularly uh, care for that other people seem to love. And vice versa, there's probably some games that I really, really love that um, a lot of people uh, don't. A good example there is James Pond. I happen to hate James Pond. I think it's a terrible game. I gave it 4 out of 10, but I'm aware that there's a lot of people out there who really love James Pond. So, uh, yeah. Magic Pockets, Magic Land Dizzy. So there's a good idea of, of what we're looking at in terms of, you know, reviews. Uh, just about everything. And obviously there's some uh, quite obscure stuff in here when you get down to like Z and Y and stuff. Um, a little bit more so. Um, there's a homebrew. See, so Yope has Ice Star is in there. Uh, stuff like Yukon there, which is a, a high-res only um, game as well. So there is some of those in there. Um, there is some quite quite obscure stuff as well. And uh, let's have a look if we can find an interview for you. Actually, at the back there, you see... There's some adverts. There, the, there were the two previous Atari books that I did. Um, there. This is done by Amazon Print On Demand. They do the books for me. So uh, technically speaking, you can order these any time. Then they're not going to kind of go out of stock. But I haven't said that, a lot of people don't seem to understand very well actually how print-on-demand works. Because a lot of people seem to be under the assumption that uh, with um, print-on-demand, they, they print the book um, when you order it, which they don't do. What they actually do is they print a, a big stack of the books. Uh, then, then when they sell them out, um, they print some more if they think there's still demand for them, obviously, and uh, keep going like that. So, so, you know, for example, you know, my... my um, said expectation book i think has now gone through something like six or seven print runs but obviously they, they do hardbacks and paperbacks separately as well so sometimes you'll see that one of them will be out of stock and the one won't for example i think as i as i record this the paperback version of this book is already showing out of stock on amazon because they they sold through the first um uh pile that they printed already and um, they sold through them really quickly and uh, the hardback it was was still showing in stock. The hardbacks never sell as well as the um, the paperbacks. Actually, while I'm there, I mentioned that the the hardback is sixteen ninety nine, and the paperback is nine ninety nine. So uh, yes, yeah, so that's under a tenner on the um, the paperback for um, about roughly about one hundred eighty pages of of content, all in full color, as I said, as you can see. So yeah, and so in terms of developer interviews, let's let's tell you who we've got. I'm gonna see if I can find them. I don't want to give too much away. That's the problem with when you do videos like this. But we have Daryl Steele. I felt that it was very important to get him in there. He's a person who's been interviewed quite a lot, but I don't think I could do a book on the Atari ST without having an interview with Daryl in there because um, not only is he, a, is he a fantastic guy who always has some really interesting stories to tell. But as many will know, he was the guy responsible for the Atari ST success in the UK, especially as the product manager. He was the one who came up with the, the legendary um, power pack. That was his idea. Um, so, yeah, so he, he had a big, big hand in the Atari ST success. And um, he talks a lot about that and uh, what went wrong um, and stuff like that in the interview. So a, a real, an always brilliant interview with Daryl Still. Um an uh, interview that you never really see, I was really pleased to get this one in the book, is an interview with Dave Muncy, who was responsible for a huge amount of um, public domain software for the Atari ST, including a lot of games that appeared on the cover discs for ST Review magazine. So you might have played some of his stuff from there. So I was really, really pleased to get have an interview with him in there. Um, really fantastic interview. Um, goes a lot into... Um, public domain games development which is not something you read about all the time i think it's something really different and another really good interview it's hard to pick actually just three that i wanted in here because i had so many good interviews that i could use but they all go in a future volume the other ones i didn't use so we have an interview with wayne smithson um name might not be instantly recognizable but he was um the head honcho of wms design obviously his initials and uh, wms did loads of good games especially for psychosis um they did the likes of blood money 
and Baal, for example, spring to mind, um, were a couple of his games. He also later went on to do Attack of the Mutant Penguins on the Jaguar. So really, really good um, interview with Wayne, uh, who tells some great stories about working with um, Psygnosis and Fax Wars with DMA Design and uh, things like that. So yeah, so that's the book really. Um, I've called it a book review because it gets picked up then easier when hits and searches and stuff like that. But it isn't really a review because it'd be rather arrogant of me to review my own book and I'm not going to do that. But obviously I do think you should buy it because I was really happy with this and I think of the uh, the, f the five books that I've done now, this is definitely my favourite one. I think I've got a little bit better with each book. I've learned um, different things about um, best ways to, to present it and stuff like that and things that work and things that don't. I'm really pleased with how it looks. I'm really pleased with the contents. I should also mention, actually, the reviews in this one are bigger than any of the other books. Um, they're longer reviews than, than in um, all of the previous books. There is actually a bit more content in here than there was in the uh, the 8-bit books, I suppose, because this is the first book I've done on a 16-bit system. So I did feel that because uh, the game's 16-bit, they're, they're often a little bit more advanced, so I did go into a bit more detail on each review, so the reviews are, are quite a bit longer um, in, in this one as well. And that's it, really. If you love the Atari ST, then I'm sure this is... Uh, the book for you um i was pleased to get this one out there as well because nobody else has done a book like this on the st we have visual com numerous visual compendiums for the amiga you know you, pc games are well covered and you know the eight bits are always well covered but the poor old atari st gets left out and now i've corrected that um by getting this one out there so yeah thank you for watching um i've been the retro laird um i suggest you go and head over to amazon i'll put some links in the description as well for where you can get this go and buy yourself a copy or if you know someone who loves the atari st go and buy them a copy for christmas um i thank you for watching i thank you for buying my book if you have um and uh, i'll see you all again for a new video very soon Bye bye